So there is a question. Please make sure you complete it and then we will get started. Okay, so could you please find this page? There is no um, real notes that go with 7-4. 7-4 um, is just more practice on using your unit circle. But if you could please uh, write down the following for me, okay? So please write down the following for me. On our unit circle, remember that the X is your cosine, the Y is your sine. And that Y over X is your tangent. So the reason we memorize the unit circle is so that we don't need a calculator to tell us the value of the trig function of anything that lands on one of our trig values. So we're talking about uh, anything that is a multiple of um, 60, 45, 30, 90, 180, 360. Anything that is coterminal with any of our spots on the unit circle will give us the trig functions. Now remember that on the unit circle, If you know the 30, the 45, and the 60, um, if you know those points, so um, let's just go over the first quadrant. Starting from at zero, that is the point one zero. Uh, 30 is square root three over two, one half. 45 is square root two over two, square root two over two. Um, 60 is 1 half square root of 3 over 2, and 90 is um, 0, 1. Now, let's look at some patterns just again one more time to just kind of talk about it for a minute. Let's look at our y values, okay? So our y values start at square root of 0 over 2, square root of 1 over 2, square root of 2 over 2, square root of 3 over 2, square root of 4 over 2. That is not a coincidence. Our y's height starts at nothing and goes up to 1. So the y's go square root of 0 over 2, square root of 1 over 2, square root of 2 over 2, square root of 3 over 2, and 1. The x's do the exact opposite. They finish at 0. They start at 1. So they go square root of 4 over 2, square root of 3 over 2, square root of 2 over 2, square root of 1 over 2, square root of 0 over 2. So that pattern is there. Now remember, that pattern goes backwards that way. So because those, the way that they match, so that goes that way, that way, and that way. Those patterns exist. So if you know the first quadrant, you will not need necessarily to remember anything more because they will all transfer to the other quadrants. That's why we made this line all red because they're coterminal or, or I'm sorry they have a reference angle of 30. We made these ones green they had a reference angle of 45 and we made those ones red because those had a reference angle of 60. So those values appear again and again and again and again. So memorize that order. Make sure you know that. We are going to have a quiz that looks exactly like this paper tomorrow. You are going to have to repeat the first quadrant. You may not use a calculator. Okay. So um, what I would like to do at this time is I would like to just practice some more with you. Now, I'm going to do some of them with you, and then the rest of them is your job to get it done before you leave this class. So it is your assignment for today, okay? So remember, let's jump down here. We know that our X is the cosine. So like if I, if I ask you on the quiz tomorrow, what is the cosine of 45? It's squared root of two over two. What is the cosine of 60? It's one half. It is the X value at that point. That's why we memorize it. Now remember, that means that one over X or the reciprocal of 
the x value is our secant. That means the reciprocal of our y value is our cosecant. And the reciprocal of our tangent, so that would be x over y instead of y over x, is our cotangent. So if you know these walking into the quiz tomorrow, you will be set. You will be ready to go, okay? And I've put the first quadrant on there. I didn't put these down. Um, you can always write those down when you, when you first get started. But remember, cosine is your x, sine is your y, tangent is y over x, and then you can build from there, okay? So keeping all of that in mind, let's actually talk about the... Uh, the actual homework or the actual class assignment, okay? So let's take a look at problem nine and 10. The first one asks us for the cosine of 270. So they're saying that theta is 270. They've drawn you a picture to say that it's 270. So they really want us to know the cosine of 270. If we know that the point at 270 is zero, negative one, we know that the point at 270 is 0, negative 1. The cosine is just the x value at that point. It's 0. I don't have to do any other thing. Okay, so now let's look at uh, 10, the tangent of theta. So in this case, we are looking at the tangent of 225. Now here's why that first quadrant is so important. This has a 45 degree reference. 180 plus 45 is 225. It is in the uh, third quadrant. So the point right there, we get to use the 45 as our guide. And in this quadrant, instead of square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2, they will both be negative. So the tangent of 45 is just the x value at that location divided by the y value at that location. What's great about the tangent of anything that is reference of 45, you always get an answer of either one or negative one. Well, in this case, two negatives make a positive, so the answer is positive. Let's keep going. We're going to do a few more, okay? So they asked for the cosine of 270 again. We already did that one, so <laughs> you get a freebie there with number 11. Let's take a look at number 12, the sine of zero. Make a little sketch for me. Tell me where zero is. That is uh, at the point one zero. So that's all you have to show me as to where you got your uh, point. Every time you draw that, it gets seeped into your brain a little bit more. That's why I want you to draw that little picture. And so that is a... Uh, y value of zero. So that's your y value. Let's just keep going down this column. We'll do a few more. Um, as you can see, these problems are super quick if you know your information. The key right here is that pi over three. That's just going to be 180 divided by three or 60. That's two 60s or 120. Now, using 60 as our reference, if we knew this first quadrant, if we know that that right there was related to 60, because this is pi over 3, if we know that is related to 60, I know I get to use the point 1 half square root of 3 over 2 in the correct quadrant, right? So 1 half square root of 3 over 2 is my guide. So let's go back down and let's draw a little picture for this. 120 is right here. I'm going to use the square root of, or one half square root of three over two, but in that quadrant, think about the fact we have to go left and then up. So our point becomes negative one half square root of three over two. The cosecant tells us that we need to flip over the y value or the sign. So here's the y value. Just flip that fraction over. And so it becomes 2 over radical 3. Now, if you leave it 2 over radical 3, I might take one point off the whole thing and go, hey, 
please make sure you rationalize. All you got to do to rationalize is pop that radical up to the top and leave a normal three behind. To, to rationalize a square root, just pop the normal thing up to the top and leave the other things behind. Okay, now let's go to sine of 300. 300, let's draw it. We always want to draw it. 300 is about here. It has a reference or it is 60 degrees away from hitting my x-axis. I get to use that same one half squared of 3 over 2 that I used in the last problem. They're completely related. Except what happens in that quadrant? In that quadrant, my x is positive but my y is negative. But since it had a reference of 60, 60 goes into 300 five times, that's five pi over three, we're good to go. Now what is sine? Sine is our y value. Exactly as we see it, it's negative square root of three over two. Two forty. Let's draw a little picture. 240 is another reference 60. Guess what? We get to use that one half squared of three over two, except 240 is in our fourth. No, it isn't. It's the third quadrant down there. It's negative one half, negative square root of three over two. So the tangent is the y value over the x value, negative square root of three over two over negative one half. Now, what's great about that is the twos are going to cancel. So you can just cancel them out and ignore them. And the negatives cancel. It's going to become a positive. So it just becomes square root of 3 over 1. And again, you can leave it like that. The best answer is radical 3. Now, we've done a lot related to 60. So let's try some other ones here. So let's do... Um, Let's do 24. Now, I did not give you any like that, but I'd like to do it so you, you can prepare yourself, okay? Um, well, let's do 22 and 24, and then, and then you should be on your own. If you, get, if you see a negative, uh, and it is in degrees, like 22, I keep adding 360 until it becomes a positive. So negative 630 plus 360, um, is negative uh, seven zero. Uh, let's see here, and then uh, that would be uh, two negative two seventy. Thank you. <laughs> Do it again, and now this time it's going to become a positive. Uh, negative two seventy plus three sixty is positive ninety. Okay, so that is really the cosine of ninety. So if it's negative. You can just keep adding uh, 360s until it becomes a positive. And then wherever you end up is where you end up. Now, 90 is the point um, 0, 1. So the cosine is just that x value. The answer is 0. Now, let's do one that is a... Um, radian measure okay okay so now let's look at 24. we know this is related to pi over six what is pi over six it's 30. so i know for 24 i'm going to use some version of square root of three over two one half i just got to find out where okay now there's tons of ways to do it i mean you can physically count out that many 30s so that's disgusting <laughs> um You know how before we added up, uh, uh, we added 360? Uh, 360 is 2 pi. Uh, 2 pi, just double your denominator, is the same as 12 pi over 6. So I'm just going to add 12 pi over 6 and 12 pi over 6 and 12 pi over 6, 2 pi, again and again until I get it to be positive. Okay, so let me show you what I mean. That is so not that. I'm going to add 12 pi over 6. Third, negative 31 plus 12, um, what is that? Uh, is that uh, is it 19? Sure. 
So that's negative 19 pi over 6. Do it again. Add 12 pi again over 6. Negative 19 plus 12 is negative 7. We're almost there. Add another 12 pi over 6. And then we finally get a positive. So this location is the same location as 5 pi over 6. 5 pi over 6, 5 times 30 is 150. That's one, the 150 mark. So let's draw a little picture. That's right here. That's 5 pi over 6. Okay. What did we say 30 was? If you see a 6, we know we get to use square root of 3 over 2, 1 half. So this point is negative square root of 3 over 2 positive one half is going to answer our question. What do we use to flip over a cosecant? What do we use to flip over a cosecant? We use, it is the flip of the, cosecant is the flip of the sine value. So the sine value is the y value here. So instead of one half, make it two over one. Now, obviously, if you know that that's 2, save yourself some time and just write 2. Now, I did not do any weird coterminally ones on the quiz. The quiz is more like uh, it's more like these ones. But I would like you to try the coterminally ones. So the quiz is more like these upper ones. That's what the quiz is more like. These ones are the harder ones. So if you can get those, and you can check those on a calculator while you're doing the homework to make sure you're doing it right, but you should be focusing on trying to do them without a calculator, okay? So uh, for the rest of class, I want you to be finishing this assignment. It is due before you walk out of here today. So please take the rest of class to keep going, okay? And tomorrow, you have to know your values in order to do the quiz, okay? So there you go.